Hello my soccer universe. Well, the European qualifiers are in the book, safe for the playoffs, but you know the main group stage is over. And we're here to review the last uh, match day, match day 10, where, yeah, it went for me a little bit like this, or you know, no, no, no. or it was all kind of so and so. I have to say this last match day, at least the matches that, that I watched uh, mostly were all not that great. But yeah, I'm wearing the Netherlands. We have the Dutch back at the World Cup. At least one of my favorite teams is already there and I'm quite happy about that. Not talking too much about the performance, uh, but we'll get to that. Um, I'm also planning to... Uh, planning. I'm, I'm not sure if I get to it because at the moment I, I'm really swamped with work tasks and they are quite tricky. But if I get to it, uh, maybe this evening, I really would love to actually make another roundup uh, on where in the other regions things are standing. I have a heavy focus on the European qualifiers because that's what I can watch. But I think there are already quite some interesting developments uh, in the other confederations as well. Um, we also know, I think the biggest surprise that we'll talk about is Serbia. And I was hoping that I have a Serbia uh, jersey by now. It is on its way, but it didn't arrive, arrive on time, so I'm pulling up Tadic there. But we're not starting with Serbia. We are starting with Croatia's water polo game against Russia. That was a rain-locked pitch uh, of the highest order. Whatever they came, came, came and split, that game was nearly played in unplayable conditions. And honestly, it more played into Russia's hands than Croatia's hands, because... Um, while well, Croatia thoroughly dominated the game. I mean, Russia, I think, had, had didn't even have a shot, shot a goal. I remember one Russia chance, but this was a game that uh, Croatia had completely in the back. They had all the control. However, the water made it so hard for them to kind of pass the ball and make a fast attack that they needed an own goal to finally come through. I think before, uh, right after the break, there was one chance for Kramaric and there was one also before the break, but this was a half chance. Um, that it was an own goal uh, by uh, Kudyashov. I mean, he really did it in perfect uh, striker manner to pull it in. But I also think it's down to the uh, near irregular conditions. However, um, while Russians will be aggrieved that they could not hold on to a draw, I think you must have had a lot of vodka to think that uh, Russia would have deserved to go through to the World Cup because while for most of the qualification, I mean, while the qualification uh, campaign for um, Croatia started rocky and then you had another dip just in the last uh, slot, overall, I think Croatia fully deserves to go to the World Cup. They were the strongest team in this group. Um, we also had uh, Northern Macedonia with 3-1 over Iceland. Uh, two goals by Elmas managed to secure the playoff spot. So we have uh, that one as well. Germany already was qualified. Um, and then I think the biggest result is definitely Serbia beating Portugal. And deservedly so. 100% deserved win by Serbia over Portugal. Yes, poor Portugal got the early lead through Renato Sanchez, although I think one can argue that there was a foul of Bernardo Silva in the build-up. But from that moment on, Portugal just held back. And already um, Vlahovic hit the post once with, with a great strike. Then uh, Tadic makes a shot that um, takes a slight deflection, but a uh, goalkeeper cannot really hold on. It's 1-1 one, one Serbia. It was really, really deserved because Portugal was just only hanging back there, which is so ridiculous for a team with that offensive talent to play still the style from 2016. Yes, back then you needed to play this way, but now please evolve. And I have, I have to say um, Santos is definitely one of those coaches national team co-coaches that uh, are on my list of coaches that need to be replaced because uh, he is definitely holding portugal back but it seemed like portugal can really hold out i mean there was a huge chance by mitrovic who came only on at halftime where you think pulled was this the chance no it was not uh tadic who played an outstanding game there um makes a cross in after corner and there are two Serbian players free 
Uh, whoever was organizing the defense should also be duly fired. Um, and uh, Mitrovic from admittedly a difficult angle a little bit, but you know, pulls it into the net in the 90th minute. And that, that was that. I mean, there was one shot over the bar and Ronaldo is crying and Serbia is celebrating. Um, now, I'm, uh, you know, while Croatia to me was a very clear one that they deserved to be in the group, I still think Portugal was the best team in, the, in, the, in this group and it all hinged on the, memorized on the non given Ronaldo goal in Belgrade in the 90th minute, you know, the one that was scraped off the line, but you can clearly see that it was actually behind the line. So, I mean, uh, that's a big what if. However, on the day, Serbia 100% deserved to go to the World Cup, to win this game and then go to, go to World Cup. They always hung in there. They had good performances. And uh, I have to say, I have a little bit of an infatuation with former Yugoslav teams. To me, I still think that um, you, if worse, you, were Yugoslavia allowed to play at the 92 Euros and maybe that team, if the country wasn't falling apart, given that Croatia made it to a third place and then add to it all the Yugoslav talent that was there. That must have been one of the best European national teams that was just ripped to shreds in front of our eyes. And ever since, I'm always thinking uh, the, the Croatia is maybe a little bit on, on decline, but Serbia might be on the rise. I mean, they won after all not, not too long ago a uh, Youth World Cup. I always like their talent and the flair. You just have to hone it and uh, keep it together. But I think uh, if and you know Dragon Star coach. I mean, uh, there's, there's the other. I think we had. Um, I saw um, Brozinetsky. I think he was the coach for Bosnia. Uh, already a little bit blown up. Uh, and then Dragan Stojkovic. I mean, I saw the face, but boy, this guy blew up. But you know, it's also a little bit the culture there. Uh, it is in any way. I I love their flair. I think they can be a great team, but they can also be a complete disaster. I still maintain Serbia was cheated at the last World Cup. Uh, the penalty on Mitrovic against Serbia uh, against Switzerland should have been given. So yeah, big surprise there. Portugal has to go to, to the players, which is not an easy path. Um, I actually I had both games. I mean, Spain, Sweden, and uh, Portugal so, so were both on at the same time, and there was a really, really. Um, in uh, I had the conundrum which was shall, 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 shall put on the big screen and said well Slatan is playing for Sweden uh, it's nominally the better game although I didn't expect a good game didn't turn out to be a good 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 game but I put Spain Sweden there uh, but I was more listening and my eyes wandered more and more and more to um, Serbia um, kind of really taking it to port Portugal so I more heard about Spain Sweden than I saw it however I must say um, and I heard it on the to uh, on, on to 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 football show. It was a typical Spain game. Uh, possession in the high 70s and shots on goal in the low ones. I mean, it, it, it really cannot be described. Uh, it is unfathomable to me how Spain can be so dominant and so weak at the same time if they have a well um, organized opponent. And we'll talk about another team that also had, had trouble there. Uh, however, f while Sweden didn't have really a shot on goal, uh, Forsberg created many chances, Kulusevski uh, created some chances, and you got the guy, you got saved one, one of those goal, goal on goal, uh, Sweden may have even a chance of winning it, not even needing Slatan for that, because Slatan was on the bench. Um, to me, I did not understand when Forsberg and Kulusevski came on at 63rd at the same time, and then taking Isak off and bring Ibrahimovic on, you need a win. Don't take your most um, most creative players out of the game. It cannot be that they're gassed. It cannot be. I mean, I can understand Kul Kul, uh, with Kulusevski maybe a little bit, but I would have also. I mean, he is young. He can run for a little bit longer. You need to win this game. At that point, I thought, yeah, even if Ibra comes on now, I mean, he's the linchpin up front, but who is serving the ball? That's the problem, and so it came as as as, as you should come. Um, a shot, uh, I think, but Dan Dani Olmo was a, a great save actually by the Swedish goalie Olsen, uh, who tips it. It goes on, on not cross, but falls to Morata, not offside. And yeah, I heard that he basically told himself, "I have to compose myself here." And it looked a little a little bit weird, but he pulled it nonchalantly in, into net, and Spain get 
an overall deserved win. However, Sweden really had the chances in the first half uh, to give Spain again a load of trouble. And yeah, Spain is at the World Cup, so at least we have one uh, one team. That I think that Spain will perform much better at the World Cup than they did in this qual qualifying final campaign. They had the, one of the most tipsy turvy campaigns. Uh, Sweden gave it their all. They had big. They had the big win over, over Spain, but then in the end, Sweden threw it away. They are a really good position uh, with their loss to Georgia, and that then put Spain in the driver's seat. Okay, we need to go to the... Uh, not an, uh, for me, it was all on uh, Monday. It was all uh, between Italy and Switzerland. Those were the two games that I was focused on. I didn't even care that Austria was playing. I didn't even care that... Um, uh, Scotland beat Den Denmark to secure a playoff spot. Um, it was another big game between Poland and Hungary, where Poland uh, really threw away their chances of uh, being seeded in, in the playoff, which really hurt them, uh, as we will see. And England also scoring 10. No, this was all side noise. Austria, by, by the way, uh, Stopping to play at a point where at least you could have pipped Israel, who were the 3-2 against the Faroe Islands, to the third spot. No, you finish fourth and finishing behind Israel, I really have, have to say, is a disgrace if you are Austria. No, it was all about with Northern Ireland, Italy, uh, Switzerland, Bulgaria. And for one half, I mean, Italy really had it, had a hard time break, break down Northern Ireland. I have to give loads of credit. They played really, really well. And the few chances they had, and I would argue that Northern Ireland probably had had even the better chances than Italy. Uh, if they can't convert, Italy probably doesn't even win. I knew this will be hard for me. My hope is that Bulgaria can hold out to Switzerland, which for a ha first half, I mean, I would say the first quarter of, of the game was rather even and then Switzerland turned on, 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 on the pressure had a huge chance when Okafor hit the post that kind of a little bit along the line it was very uh, nearly going in but Bulgaria held on but I already saw if the first goal for Switzerland comes uh, all hell might break loose over uh, Bulgaria and it's more or less exactly what happened while Italy just struggled to create any chances and I really, I'm not sure if Mancini got the right tactics uh, and, and, and so on. They really had a hard time breaking down Northern Ireland. I think the, the best period, and it was very much um, a carbon copy of the game uh, Italy-Sweden uh, in 2017, where there was a short period, but just, just before where I really thought Italy is not going to get into it. But whatever Insigne touched went over the bar and everything else. Yeah, it was it was not a good showing by Italy at all. Uh, but I also can understand that if you have a solidly organized defense, it makes it harder. And then if you have a Verratti missing, who is kind of uh, threading all kinds of passes, uh, it is not easy. And I said, no, 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 Ireland had two big chances. And Italy, at that moment, I knew... It's not gonna, gonna happen. And then, you know, Switzerland uh, scores through Okafor. Vargas makes it not shortly after 2-0. Um, then they had two goals disallowed. And I, I, I knew that if Switzerland just w um, win 3-0, this is probably already right enough because Italy is not gonna score more than one goal. And it was exactly 1-0 and 3-0 uh, ensure Switzerland's passage because they have the head-to-head -head against Italy because head-to-head uh, -head still counts. Uh, away goals still count in uh, UEFA qual qual qualifying now, and when Italy when Switzerland you know made it made it three and seventy sec second through Eton, I knew this will be a route, and Switzerland is already through, and then Froila makes it four nil. Italy just cannot break it down, and yeah, I said it. Italy. I don't want to blame it all on Jorginho. But if you convert those two penalties, Italy is through to all the World Cup. You need to take your chances. I said in the last one, uh, at that point, and I really thought that, yeah, Switzerland deserves it more than Italy. And Italy has to go now through all the playoffs, and we know how much they uh, will not like uh, that path. Uh, as for yesterday's game, uh, Finland held gave for half uh, France. They're all Finland needed to get a result to stay ahead of Ukraine, but then Ukraine made it 2-0. One to nil in France also. Uh, then Bonsema in the 66 uh, puts France on on the way. Then a great goal by Mbappé uh, 10, 10 minutes later, where he just runs from mid midfield with a little dummy, uh, more, more or less, 
and from the edge of the box, I mean, really in the corner, takes a great shot, makes it total nil. Uh, really, really, it looks uh, easier than it pro than it is. Uh, absolute amazing goal. Um, we had Wales Belgium one one, meaning that Belgium actually secures that they're uh, not Belgium Wales secure that they are seeded in the playoffs. And then it was all between Turkey, the Netherlands, and Norway, uh, where early on Montenegro took a lead against Turk, the, the, the Turkey, which would, would, would have meant that Norway um, would just need a draw and it would all be settled for, for them. However, Turkey turned it around, uh, probably deserve it so as well. So at that point, the Netherlands-Norway game became a direct shootout with Norway needing to win, however, having no means. That game was boring as can be. Louis van Gaal in the wheelchair because he had broken a bone. Uh, the Netherlands just controlling it. And I was always wondering, oh, is this not a little bit playing with fire? Now, in the end, the Dutch um, made it count. Uh, I always had the feeling if Norway needs to open up, and I think this was the conundrum for, for Norway. Norway no, knew if you organize the Dutch are not in a state where they can actually really break us down. Uh, and, and, and I was really wa wondering, uh, Dan Juma, is that the best thing that the Dutch can uh, can't drop at, uh, at the moment, seemingly? Um, however, he gives an assist to Borgwijn exactly when um, Norway really threw their all to them. Yes, you didn't have Holland, so makes it uh, nice. Uh, he plays it over to Bergman on an uh, attack and it's 1-0 for the Dutch. And then late on, uh, Norway really trying and then um, I think uh, Van Dijk clear, clear, clears it, Bergman plays it, heads it towards, um, uh, no, Depay heads it towards Bergman, who then runs straight free, free and goal, plays it over to Depay, 2-0. That was that and that last pass was not even all that great. It was a relief for me more than that I was overjoyed. This was not a Netherlands team that I really enjoyed playing, but then on the backs of them uh, really destroying uh, Turkey and uh, having Norway more or less under control than Dutch also deserved it. Uh, and yeah, we have Turkey in the playoffs. So uh, we have 10 qualified teams. Group by group, Serbia, Spain, Switzerland, France, Belgium, Denmark, Netherlands, Croatia, England, and Germany. And in the playoffs, the seeded teams are. And then now the, play, the, the way it works, it's rather, rather tricky. We have uh, six seeded and six unseeded teams. So one seeded team plays at home to an unseeded team. But then uh, the final is then a straight draw. So it could be that we have Portugal and Italy for a spot at the World Cup. I just want to mention that. At this very, very, very moment, we have a chance, chance of qualification. This is ahead of the draw, which happens on the 26th, I think. Uh, we have Italy with 46% and Portugal with 41%, of course, being the favorites. And then uh, Sweden with 20, uh, with 20, 29 is num number three. So those are the obvious uh, choices. However, see the teams. We have Russia, Portugal, Scotland, Italy, Sw Sweden, and Wales. In that order, they are kind of ranked. And then the Turkey, Poland, North Macedonia, Ukraine, Austria, and the Czech Republic. So I would say if I look now at Italy, Portugal, the potential opponents, I might want to avoid Turkey because they are always weird. Um, and maybe Poland, Lewandowski, but I, I think these should be opponents that you can go easily over. But then it really depends on the, on the final straw. Uh, whether you have a, a direct, a, a good route or a rather tough route. And yeah, it's one of games and we have to see uh, how the draw is before we can make any conclusions. However, Italy put themselves in a whole lot of jeopardy. That was not necessary, to be honest. Convert the penalties. Convert the penalties. Don't change your run-up to the, to, the, to, the, to the penalties. At least my Dutch are at the World Cup and... I cannot say that uh, there's a whole lot of schadenfreude that Serbia made it to that World Cup as well. In any case, let me know your thoughts on the European qual 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 qualifiers. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay up to with everything that happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.